Carmen here, and today we are with Ryan. And Ryan is a licensed architect and also has a lot of experience with construction and just knows a lot about um, houses and how they're constructed. And so what we're going to talk about today is about electrical outlets and what happens if one of the outlets somehow doesn't work, um, like it trips or something happens to it and then it, it, we can't use it anymore. Right. Um, maybe you can share some of your expertise about that. Yeah, so we're standing in front of what's called a GFCI, a ground fault circuit interrupter and you'll see these in wet locations throughout the house. So bathrooms, kitchens, by pool, uh, sometimes in garages. Uh, and it's, it's, it's put in place for safety reasons. That's why you don't see it in a bedroom, for instance, because there's no water involved in a bedroom. And what would indicate that this is a GFI outlet? Yeah, you can tell it's a GFI because of the, the two buttons that are on there. There's a test and reset button. And are the buttons always red and black? The buttons are red and black. It's a standard color. Standard color. Okay. Yeah. So what happens if you press this button? This is the reset button. So if you... <gasps> oh my God! Gotcha. Yeah, so what you, what you want to look for is the reset button wants to be pushed in. That means that the power is coming to that mechanism and it's actually working. But if for some reason, if you overload it and it trips and you lose power, this red button is going to be sticking out. So just for instance, this is sticking out. Um, and then what you do is if you come over and push the button and it stays in, that means the power is going back to that mechanism again. But if not, then you'll have to start unplugging uh, your appliances and trying to figure out what's tripping that breaker. A lot of the times it's not that you've dropped something into the sink that has power to it, but that it, you've overloaded the circuit. So for instance, your hair dryer, uh, you have a stereo going and you have a wall heater that's likely going to trip the circuit. So you just have to start unplugging things. What? Oh man! So what does it mean when you say you're tripping the circuit? The trip is just a term, so when you overload it and it trips, it goes you know, it clicks off, you've tripped the circuit. So it basically stops the electricity from reaching right. that outlet. It stops the flow of electricity through the circuit. Okay. It breaks the circuit. And so that's kind of what you see on blow dryers when they have the little buttons on there too? Right, yeah, so it's a secondary precaution. You'll have two buttons on that little device on the cord and it's a test and reset just like this. So what happens if you press that reset button and then it doesn't work still? Then you would probably go back to your main panel board and find the circuit that's connected to this and you'll have to reset that breaker. Okay. And if that doesn't work? If that doesn't work, uh, that's when I would call an electrician. So there you have it. The next time you see or you experience one of your outlets not working and it has a GFCI outlet, then you're probably going to want to try and test out some of these buttons there to see if they work or test out the breaker if that doesn't work. Uh, it'll probably save you a buck or two before hiring an electrician, but again, if those don't work, then you may have to call your local electrician. So I just wanted to pick Ryan's brain about electrical panels and say for instance, one of the outlets doesn't work or outlets within a bedroom doesn't, they don't work, what do you do? So you would come out here and hopefully everything would be labeled and you'd trip it and... Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Gotcha. Yeah, you would come and open your panel and you would find the bedroom label. Hopefully everything's labeled for you. And then you would have to re-trip the breaker. Okay, and how would you do that? The there's an offside and an onside, so this is now the offside, and then clearly, if it's in this position, you can just simply flip it over. Um, but there are instances where it'll just be slightly tripped, and you won't necessarily be able to tell. So you can come through and you kind of have to test each of them and see, and then you have to go off, and then you go all the way back. And how many times do you do that? Just once. Just once? Yeah. And then after you do that, do you just go back inside and test the outlets? Yeah, if, if it trips on, if it goes on, you should be okay. 
Uh, there are times if it's off and you go to turn it back on, it'll just automatically flip back to the off side, which means you've got too many things plugged in, you got too many things going on in there. And then go back inside, unplug everything, and then try it again. What are all of these numbers and labels here? Yeah, so this panel is organized very nicely. Everything relates back to a certain location inside the house. And uh, you can see that there's some that are on outlets. Here's your air conditioning. And then there's another one where you have lights outside. Uh, in this case, we have solar panels connected to this house. Um, if it's not organized like this, I would take the time to go through your house, trip a breaker, figure out which outlets are on there, and then come back and relabel it. Well, thank you, Ryan, for answering some of these really important questions about breakers and what all these numbers and all these labels mean. It can be really intimidating and look really confusing, but actually it's pretty simple and something that everybody should really know how to do if you have a home or if you have access to one of these that relates to your house um, or wherever you live.